Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going over my newest addition to my studio. It's the HP Elite Book 820 G4, and I've converted this into what's known as a Hackintosh. To me, a Hackintosh is a great affordable way to get a powerful system into your studio on a budget. Uh, these Hackintoshes are quite capable. This Elite Book is equipped with an Intel dual core i7 processor for the price I find it to be plenty powerful and plenty capable to handle all of my needs whether it's graphics editing music production or DJ work one of the best advantages to having a Hackintosh over a standard Apple issued hardware is the amount of ports available on these laptops this Elite Book is equipped with a plethora of ports. Starting from the left, we've got a USB Type C port, and this is not a Thunderbolt. It's just a standard USB 3.1 port, but with the USB C connector. So you get the five gigabytes per second connection there. Uh, following up, we've got the Display Port, an audio jack 3.5 millimeter for audio out, a standard USB 3.1 port. And next we've got the Ethernet port, which I find quite handy. Uh, direct connection for me works so much speedier than in Wi-Fi connection, so I always go with the direct plug-in. And then we've got the micro SIM card, and then your standard DC input for the power adapter. On the flip side, we've got your old but trusty VGA adapter, and then another USB 3.1 port with charging capabilities to charge your external peripherals and then the smart card port. So right there you've got an advantage, you've got plenty of ports, no need for dongles or attachments or adapters. You can plug pretty much anything you need in right here on the Elite Book. In addition to all the ports, I've decided to extend my setup and add four more ports using the Anker 4 port USB 3.0 hub. It's a trusty part of my gear. I find it quite reliable and handy in my studio. Taking a look at the laptop as it sits in the studio, you see I've got all the ports utilized. Starting from the top, we've got USB-C connected and then down from that, I've got the HDMI to display port adapter. The monitor I'm running uses HDMI, so I use this adapter to get the connection up and running. Below that, you've got my Anchor 4 port USB hub using the USB 3.1 port, and then below that, Ethernet, and then the power adapter. Taking a look at the interior of the laptop, you can see I've got 32 gigabytes of G Skill Rip Jaws RAM installed. I always like to max out the RAM. I do pretty intensive graphic design projects, photo editing video and also music so it's always nice to have that overhead and extra ram if you need it this can be picked up at a pretty affordable price and that's one thing i really like about the elite book g4 it can accept 32 gigabytes of ram if you were to get the cheapest macbook capable of 32 gigabytes you're spending so much more than what it cost me to set this laptop up just below the ram we've got the intel 8265 ngw Wi-Fi Bluetooth card installed. I really like this card. It works well with Hackintosh. I'm able to get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth up and running using a couple of kecks, which I'll cover a little bit later in this tutorial. And the Bluetooth spec is 4.2, which allows you a little bit more range and speed than a 4.0 card. So I'm really happy with the addition of this card to the setup. You can find this card over at Amazon. It's compatible with quite a wide range of laptops, so do your research, but I highly recommend this card. It works well with Hackintosh, and it's delivered me the results I need when connecting Bluetooth peripherals or accessing the internet while I'm on the go. One of the cool additions to this laptop, I decided to add an antenna to extend the range of the Bluetooth so that I can move around uh, using my Bluetooth headphones and get a clean signal no matter where I am in the house. I can even walk outside and keep the music playing. You can pick up a standard antenna like this on Amazon. I've included a link in the description to the antenna and adapter cable that should work with the Intel card. And this is just excellent. The range is extended and you don't have any issues 
getting a clean signal no matter where you are within your setup and it's highly recommended. You can see here I've made some modifications to the interior to get the antenna up and running. I had to drill a small hole in the bottom of the laptop and then I've got the antenna connected on the outside and you're able to easily fasten and unfasten depending on your use case. When I'm in the studio I've got it mounted in this wonderful 12 South laptop mount and then I can just position the antenna to be most useful and give me the most range in the area that I'm working in. So below the Wi-Fi card you can see I've got the Western Digital 1 terabyte NVMe PCIe drive installed. This drive is an excellent drive, had no issues, it gives you plenty of speed, plenty of storage, and it runs at the PCIe 3.0 spec and it's got four lanes as well. So this drive is highly, highly recommended. If you notice there's a space below the drive and to the left you see an, a SATA connector. This is actually a space to install a 2.5 SATA drives. So you can actually have dual hard drives installed in this laptop which I find extremely useful and impressive for a laptop of this size and this budget. Now I've left the bay empty to make room for the antenna addition but you can if you decide to opt out of the antenna you can actually install both drives. It's a really tight fit but I've actually run that setup and it works quite well with no issues at all. You can find the Western Digital SN730 drive over at Amazon. It's quite affordable and highly recommended. Inside the drive enclosure, I'm running a Seagate 2 terabyte drive. It's the six gigabytes per second SATA 3 standard. And I find this drive to be quite reliable and affordable. And you can pick that up at Amazon. You can pick up these enclosures pretty much anywhere from eBay uh, or Amazon. I found one at Amazon that should work for your needs. It's affordable. It's only 10 bucks and it's a quick and easy way to expand the storage of your unit. These are also great for mobile applications if you're on the go. Just pop it in your laptop bag and you've got your expanded storage ready to go. Another thing that I think is extremely important about whatever setup you run is to always keep a bootable backup and clone of any drives that you use in your setup. For me, it's really important because I've had issues where I might install a bit of software that's corrupted or you might have a crash or something happened where you have data loss. And so having a bootable backup and backups of all the drives that you have in your system is just essential. So I've got one backup for the internal drive, which is the smaller enclosure. That's the PCIe NVMe enclosure. And then the red enclosure is a backup of the 2.5 drive. So I've got all my media backed up on the red drive. And then my system is backed up on the PCI drive with the NVMe enclosure. You can find the NVMe enclosure that I use right here on Amazon. It's the TBT SSD enclosure. And it's extremely lightweight and functional. And the enclosure has got fins there for the heat distribution so it doesn't get hot. Some of the other drive enclosures that I've tried in the past got extremely hot, so it's important to get one that has proper cooling to keep your drives cool and running at optimal speeds. Moving over to the graphics side of things, I'm using a DisplayPort to HDMI adapter. I just recently added an ASUS 1080p monitor to my setup. And so the EliteBook standard has a DisplayPort coming out and so I bought this adapter so I could connect to the ASUS monitor. You can pick one of these up on Amazon. It's pretty affordable and it allows you to be flexible in connecting to your external graphics and displays. Moving up just above the DisplayPort, I've decided to add a digital audio card to my setup. This card is quite incredible. It attaches right here to the USB-C output and it allows me to connect my two M Audio BX5 monitors and also the subwoofer seamlessly to my system. And it's got a power on switch. I've included a link to a similar card that you can find at Amazon. In the rear, I've got an adapter connected from 
RCA to quarter inch for the tops. And then on the front, you can see I've got the 3.5 millimeter out connected to an adapter that runs over to my Klipsch subwoofer. So it's a really affordable and streamlined way of getting audio connected to the laptop. And this card can be taken on the go. It's bus powered. So it's extremely convenient and essential if you're working on music or would like to connect to an external audio setup. I found a card that pretty much offers the similar functionality of the card that I use. This is the Duke Audio Q3 uh, DAC, and you can find that over at Amazon. It's got knobs on the front for treble, bass, and volume, and also your headphone jack out of the front, and then RCA and coaxial and optical in the back. So you've got quite a few ins and outs that should be a nice addition to anyone's audio setup. So moving on to the software side of things, I'm running a Hackintosh setup as I mentioned in the beginning, and that's your ability to install macOS operating systems on PC hardware. That is hardware that's usually uh, configured to run Windows. So using this incredible guide by Rehab Man, I was able to get this Hackintosh Elite Book up and running with little effort. I highly recommend this Elite Book series if you'd like to jump into Hackintoshing. These Elite Books are quite affordable and you can get 99.9% .9 of the functions and features working seamlessly with uh, Mac. And it's a relatively trouble-free experience once you get up to speed with the methods of Hackintoshing. I've included a link to this guide over at Tony Mac X86 and take a look, you know, read through and you should be able to follow these steps and get your Elite Book up and running in no time. So the guide calls for the use of a different Wi-Fi Bluetooth card, but as I mentioned in the intro, I decided to go with the Intel AC Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. And so you need these kecks right here in order to get the Intel card working. I've included a link in the description to these kecks and guides. And if you follow these, you should be able to get your Intel and Wi-Fi up and running with your Elite Book in no time flat. So one of my favorite things about running a laptop as the heart and brains of my setup is the portability and convenience. So I can have the studio set up and then when I'm ready to head out for a gig, unplug, shut everything down, and then I'm ready to transition right over to my DJ setup. And this laptop is so lightweight. As I said, this is the 820G4. This is the smallest offering from HP. And this laptop is featherweight, it's even lighter than a MacBook Air. And like I said, it's got so many more ports and functionality than a MacBook Air would offer. So that's why I decided to go with the HP EliteBook 820G4. This EliteBook handles all aspects of my workflow from music production, I can get multi-track productions going, MB with my media playback, media server, I can do some light gaming, and I'm also able to do some light video editing. The Intel HD 620 card, it's not a powerhouse, but it's quite capable of doing some basic small video editing projects. And I actually edited this video on the 820 G4. So all in all, if you're looking for an affordable and easy way to get into the Apple ecosystem, I highly recommend a Hackintosh. You've got to have a little bit of technical expertise to learn how to implement all the kecks and follow the guide to get your laptop set up. But once you get over that, you can have quite an affordable and powerful and versatile package for your studio music, graphic design, and video needs. Thanks so much for tuning in. This has been an incredible experience for me and I hope it will shed some light for you on the world of Hackintoshing. I highly recommend the EliteBook 820 G4. If you take a look down in the description, I've included links to each of the components that I use and also a link to the Hackintosh guide. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and come back for more videos. I've got so much more on the way and we will see you in the next one.